Listen, good morning. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayers. Welcome to the virtual services of the New Ebenezer Baptist Church as we come together today to celebrate this Thanksgiving day. The Lord has been good. He has been gracious and kind to us and has brought us to the place of worship that we can now come to lift, glorify, and to magnify the name of our Christ. It's with the spirit of thanksgiving that we pause on today, thanking God for all that he has done all that he will continue to do in our lives in spite of where we at at this present moment it's a good day in spite of what the situations are in life it is a good day in spite of beloved god what may carry us or burden us on today it's a good day for us to pause and to give praise and thanks unto the lord the scripture says oh give thanks unto the lord for all that he has done welcome now to the thanksgiving services of the new ebenezer baptist church Yeah. 
Thanksgiving to all. Our scripture this morning be coming from Psalms 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all the wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continuously. Remember the wonderful works that he has done, his miracles, and the judgments of he uttered. O offsprings of Abraham, his servant son of Jacob, his chosen one. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all earth. I read to you Psalms 105, verses 1 through 7. May the Lord have a blessing to the reader, the hear, but most of all, the doer of his most holy word. Let us pray. Our Father, we come, Lord, first to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for yet another day, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we're thankful for this Thanksgiving 2021, Heavenly Father. Lord, we sit back and think of what was, but we know we serve a God who made what is. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, this, this prayer this morning is a thank you prayer, Heavenly Father. Because truly, Lord, in our hearts and our spirits, we're thankful, Heavenly Father. I'm speaking for all those that's under my voice, Heavenly Father. I'm speaking for those who can't speak for themselves, Lord. But thank you. Thank you. Truly, thank you, Lord. We love you, Heavenly Father. We can't say, continue to say the same thing over and over again. But truly, Lord, we want to say thank you. Lord, you kept us, Lord. You guided us, Lord. You strengthened us, Heavenly Father. You gave us yet another chance after chance after chance, which you truly didn't have to do. And we want to say thank you again for your love and comfort, Lord. Thank you for yet just touching us, strengthening us, Lord. We living in a, in a world that don't know God or his darling son, Jesus. But we know a God who sits high and looks low, who keeps us and guides us, who orders our footsteps, who give us yet another opportunity to look to the hills which come of our help. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As they say, if I had 10,000 tongues, but with just yes, one, yes, thank you, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this day don't go in vain, Heavenly Father, that folks really take the opportunity to know that it was because of you that there is us. And with this Thanksgiving 2021, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. I ask all these blessings in your son, Jesus Christ's name, for which I pray. Amen and thank God.
Put your hands together. Another, another. 
Come on and thank him. Come on and thank him. Come on and thank him. Come on, lift them hands. Thank him. Oh, come on, saints. Give him that praise. You ought to praise and thank him. You ought to praise and thank him. How good the Lord is. I said, how good the Lord is. Anybody got to thank your spirit? Let me see your hand. Come on, thank you. Come on, put them together. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. Oh, yeah. Brand new mercy, brand new grace. Another day, another opportunity, another privilege. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you for all things. Your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. Thank you for another day, another chance and privilege to be in your house. God, you have been good to us. You have blessed us and kept us and brought us together one more time that we might lift, glorify, and magnify your name. Thank you for the spirit of praise that now flows through this sanctuary. It's preaching time again, so you pour in, allow us to pour out. That when we leave this place, we leave here the better, not because of us, but because of your word. Therefore, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The saints say amen. And bless God. Come on, one more time. Put them hands together. Just tell the Lord, thank you in your own little space. Just tell the Lord, thank you. Reach over and tell your neighbor, you ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How good the Lord is. Listen, we praise and bless God again for another Thanksgiving morning. That the Lord has blessed us to come together and to share with both family members and friends, church family, we are praising God for the great and awesome things that the Lord is doing and that the Lord is now working in all of our lives. We're certainly praying again for all of those who desire the prayers of our church. We certainly keep you lifted and covered in our prayers that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will keep you and sustain you uh, as only the Lord is able to do. All of those families of our church who are going through during this time of bereavement, we lift you all as well. That Taylor family, we lift you all, cover you in your prayer, in our prayers. On today's services, so Brother Taylor uh, is going to be held on next Friday uh, here in the sanctuary of our church at 11 a.m. And so we lift and cover you all uh, in our prayer as well. Pray for my family members, those of homes, that the Lord will certainly bless them, comfort, and keep them as only the Lord is able to do as we walk through this season. Continue to pray for Sister Mamie Owens. Mamie is still in the uh, hospital there at uh, Beaumont, so I want you all to keep lifting Mamie and certainly covering her in your prayers. If you are watching us virtually or listening to us, immediately following this service, those individuals who are in need of a meal, you're welcome to come by our church and get a prepared meal. Get a prepared meal, take it home, heat it up, and be able to share with your family, regardless of the size of your family. If you need a meal, come on by. 6300 Hartford Avenue here in Detroit, and the Lord is going to bless you as he blesses us. This is Thanksgiving. That means we're thankful and we're giving. Amen. We're thankful to God for what God is doing in our lives, and we're giving and being a blessing to others as well. And so it is that season that you and I are thankful and grateful to the Lord. Any thankful people, just let me see your hands. That's right. Thankful and grateful to the Lord. So listen to your prayers for preaching on today that the Lord will certainly uh, have his way in preaching on today. If you got your Bibles, got your Bibles, quickly, quickly go over to Luke chapter number 17. Those who have your Bibles. Luke chapter 17. Thank you all for sharing with us in this hour of worship uh, on today. Luke chapter 17, for those that have your word, would share with us in preaching. Amen. 
my car. Luke chapter 17. When you have it, say amen. Luke chapter 17. I'm going to look at verses 12 on today. Verses 12 through 17. Luke chapter 17. Verses 12 through 17. I honor all of our ministers who are sharing with us. Pastor Robert Mills who is sharing with us as well uh, on this morning. All of our preachers, officers, members, and friends. Luke 17. I'm going to start reading at verse 12. I want to kind of break it up so you all stick with me as I read it. Luke 17, verse 12 and 13 reads like this. And he entered into a certain village that there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Y'all see it? And they entered into a certain village that met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. First part of my preaching, how it started. How it started. Look at verse number uh, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Y'all see it? And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten, but where are the nine? How it ended. Watch it again, verse number 12 and 13, how it got started. Verse number 14 through 17 talks about how it ended. I want to do a little sermon today simply entitled, How It Started and How It Ended. Tell your neighbor how it started and how it ended. Certainly solicit your prayers for preaching on today that the Lord will have his way in preaching on today. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is on today. Watch this, beloved God. Most of us, if we really tell the truth about our relationship with the Lord, most of our encounters with God began with a request. We did not come before the Lord as individuals in the very beginning seeking or thanking God, I should say, for what the Lord has done or what the Lord was doing. But most of us, our first encounter had to do with you and I seeking God with a request. We needed God to help us. We were in a situation. We were going through some problems. We were dealing with some cares of the world. We were trying to figure out how you and I was just going to make it through these ample times of life and living. It had nothing to do with joy bells ringing down in our souls or us being happy in Jesus or you and I just becoming individuals who were sold out to the master. No, most of us came to the Lord because we were dealing with something. We came to church because something was going on in our lives. Something was out of order. We were trying to figure out some things made on some occasions to come. But most times when we personally sought the Lord, it was not with the spirit of thanksgiving, but it was with the spirit of need. For many of us, beloved of God, when we came to Christ, Christ was our only hope. It seems as though everything about life and living had turned itself into a direction where you and I didn't know how to come out of what we were going through. We didn't know how to handle what we were dealing with. And we kept on trying, pressing our way of trying to make things happen, only to find out that in order for us to make it and or to succeed, we had to turn it over to the Lord. Anybody familiar with the fact you just got to give it to Jesus? 
You just got to put it in his hands. You just have to surrender to the fact that it is bigger than you and that you and I cannot handle it. And while we're trying to make it work, we come up with all of our own man-made remedies to try to get us through. We go drink our way through, or smoke our way through, or party our way through, or lie our way through, only to find out that there comes a season in your life when you just got to give it over to the Lord. Somebody say, give it over to him. You just have to give it over to him. That, beloved, care of God was the case in today's assignment. That was the case in today's text. That was the case in today's message. For God reveals unto you and I through the word of God that there comes a time in our lives when we must make up in our minds that the only way to handle it is to give it over to the Lord. That was the case of these ten lepers. They were at wit's end. They were individuals, beloved of God, who had no hope in the system or the people that were around them. Their condition had no known cure. And the only thing that they could look forward to was death and dying. These individuals found themselves in unusual places. They were lepers. They were treated as outcasts and forbidden to be a part of society's normal life and living. They were lepers. They were rejected. They were despised. They were kicked aside. They were talked about. They were laughed at. They were lied on. They were lepers. They were individuals who had uh, what were known as forbidden contact. They could not come in contact with individuals because they were individuals who carried this dreaded disease. And these individuals find themselves, beloved of God, again, outcast from society. On a normal day, I thought about this the other day. On a normal day, they could only get six feet close to a person. On a windy day, they could only get 150 feet close to a person. I thought about this when I was kind of doing a little research on it. Six feet is what law required even today. Six feet was said to be the normal safety space between you and another person. Six feet, whether sitting or walking or conversing or talking, six feet, and that, that was considered to be the space between you and sanity, or you and a condition, watch this, or you and a virus that could be easily spread six feet. These lepers found themselves in an unusual place. They were outcast again. They could not deal with society. They could not hang out with their old family and friends. Matter of fact, lepers lived in a colony that was outside of the city limits. Yeah, they had their own little place, their own little town where they lived at. And this colony, beloved of God, only offered them two senses of hope. Either they would get cured or they would die. The only thing they had to look for was the possibility of hope. But nine out of ten times, they were assured that they would die. These lepers found themselves in this unpeculiar place. They found themselves trying to deal with life and trying to make it on their own. They found themselves rejected, cast aside. Nobody wanted to be bothered with them. Couldn't go to the party. Couldn't come to the Thanksgiving dinner. Couldn't hang out with individuals for Christmas. They could not do anything. Couldn't go to a restaurant. Couldn't have a beer. Yeah, couldn't sit down at the bar and get a drink. They could not do those things because they were lepers. But lepers were wise enough to understand a couple of things. One of them is that the leper knew that he had a relationship with two people. The priest and God. Y'all should really help me preach up in here. Yeah, you got you to study your text because the leper had two relationships. A relationship with the priest and a relationship with God. Watch this. The record said when a person had leprosy or thought they had leprosy, they would go and show themselves to the priest. When they would go and show themselves to the priest, the priest would look at them. And the priest was able to identify, beloved of God, that they had leprosy. 
Now watch this, because this is what we fail to realize. And I often tell this to New Ebenezer. Stay close to the pastor. Because the pastor can sometimes see what you can't. Y'all should really help me preach up in here. Well, well, you can't see. I often tease the members. They would say, Pastor, why you keep asking me, am I okay? I said, well, I could just look at you and tell that you ain't okay. No, Pastor, I mean, I ain't trying. I could just look at you and kind of tell when your spirit is troubled or something is wrong or something is out of order. You'd rather run with the other crowd than the sanctified crowd. You'd rather, you rather hang with the drinkers and the smokers rather than to hang with the priest, the pastor, the man of God, somebody who can tell you when something is out of order the leopard even though he understood the fact that there may have been something wrong with him he did not go to the doctor first went to the priest the record declared that the priest could look at him and the priest could let him know beloved of God what was wrong Secondly, watch this important fact they believe that if you had leprosy it had to do with sin that you are out of order with God and that God would punish you with this dreaded disease of leprosy. I sure wish I had some help up in here. Do you remember when Moses' sister was talking about Moses to his brother and God got upset because Miriam was talking about Moses and God decided to have a meeting Watch this. He went to the leader, Moses, and said, bring them to the tent, the place of worship, but don't go in. And the record said when they gathered there that God held a conference and God showed Miriam where she was out of order for putting her mouth on the preacher man. And the record said, and God stricken her with leprosy. I so sure wish I had Bible readers in church on Thanksgiving. Stricken her with leprosy and the record said that Moses pleaded on the behalf of his sister and asked God to please take it away. And God said for the benefit of other folk that I'll suffer her to deal with this dreaded disease. Preach pastor. I want to tell somebody on today, no matter how sympathetic sometimes we are to what people are going through in life, sometime when God has spoken and you say, let the church say amen, you got to say amen on the good, the bad, and even the ugly. When God has spoken, Watch the text. These individuals find themselves in an unusual place, find themselves in an unusual condition. These individuals understand that death is going to come. But they also know that the only person who could handle leprosy in the Old Testament was God. And the only person who could handle leprosy in the New Testament was Jesus. Come on, help me preach up in there. Tell you, baby, he won't be much longer. Watch, watch the text. The record says that even though they lived in isolation, even though they lived beloved in this community, this colony, where death uh, is evident to come into their lives, even though they understood that they were supposed to die, evidently, somewhere, they had heard somebody talking about Jesus. Preach, Pastor. I wish I had some help in here. Watch this. Say, Evidently, somewhere, somebody either came on the outskirts of the colony and talked about this stranger who was in the city that was healing. Somewhere along the way, they had heard this conversation about this man who specializes in what seems to be impossible. Somehow they heard about this fellow called Jesus. Because the record declares that on this certain day, when Jesus, beloved of God, was entering into this village, the record says somebody must have told them Jesus is heading in this direction. You got to give them some credit. Now watch the text because the text reveals unto you and I. When the word got out, 10 of them 
made up in their minds that we were going to cry out to Jesus to have mercy on us. Ten, somebody say ten. Ten of them understood the fact that there was strength in numbers. Ten of them understood how weakened their condition had weakened them. And these individuals figured if we cry out together, God will hear. Christ would answer our requests. Here's the first point of the day. Quit trying to be blessed by yourself. Quit seeking God only on your behalf. Quit thinking that you're the only person that needs the Lord. Quit acting like you're the only person that's going through something, that's dealing with something. Because what the text revealed to you and I is that they were wise enough to know that all of them had a problem. Matter of fact, all of them had the same problem. And most importantly, they realized all of them needed Jesus. Just, just kind of look at your neighbor and say, all of us need him. All of us. All of us need him. They got together according to the text of Scripture. I'm about done. They got together according to the text of Scripture. In their weakened condition, they found their way outside of the colony, close enough to the road that when Jesus was passing by, that they hollered out to the Lord. Watch this here. When they cried out to the Lord, they didn't ask the Lord to have mercy on me. They said to the Lord, have mercy on us. Can I preach for a little while on today? See, beloved of God, what we fail to realize is that all of us need the Lord for one thing or the other, one reason or the other. I might need him for one thing. You might need him for another thing. I might be going through one thing. You might be going through another thing. But in the end, all of us need the Lord to help us. They say, Jesus, have mercy on us. Yeah, watch it because they realize if the Lord helped one, that the Lord could help all. They also realize that the testimony of many would be important to the ministry of Christ. Therefore, they said to the Lord, have mercy on all of us. Yeah, don't know what their names were, but have mercy on all of us. Did not tell what their background was, but have mercy on all of us. Did not tell where they came from in society, but have mercy on all of us. Did not tell who had the condition the longest, but they asked the Lord for mercy on all of them. Did not tell where they were planning to go when they left there. But they needed the Lord to have mercy on all of them. They were wise enough to know that if Jesus handled their situation, that Jesus himself could then turn around and turn their lives around. So they cried out together and said, Lord, have mercy on us. And the Bible says that Jesus heard them. Why don't you tell your neighbor he heard them? Yeah, yeah, they, they cried, have mercy on us. Yeah, they took the modern terminology of the hymn writer and said, pass us not. Yeah, oh gentle Savior. Yeah, they said to the Lord, here I, yeah, I humbled cry. And while on others thou art calling. Look what they said. Do not pass us by. Yeah. Well, watch what the Bible says. Because Jesus heard them. Yeah. And when Jesus heard them, he said, go show yourselves unto the priest. If you don't mind me backing up just one more time, what Jesus did was show them important how important the preacher really is. Yeah. What a major part in your life that the preacher really pays. He says, and now go and show yourself. Yeah. The person who said you got it. Yeah. Yeah. is now the same person who will tell you that you don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. He said unto him, go on now to where the priest is. And when you arrive there, yeah, let the priest tell you what he sees. 
well, the Bible says that while they were on their way, yeah, yeah, before they ever arrived to where the priest was, yeah, yeah, somebody ought to have me preach in here, well, they looked at themselves, yeah, yeah, and began to identify one with the other, you look different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leopard number one said to number two, you look different. Number two said to number three, you look different. Three said to four, you look different. Four said to five, so do you look different. Six said to seven, I declare you look different. Seven said to eight, man, I believe we're different. Nine said to ten, oh yeah, yeah. We're healed. Eh? I wish I had a witness here. Eh? And the Bible says eh, yeah, yeah, that when they realized eh, that they had been healed, oh Lord, eh, nine of them eh, kept quiet. Eh? But one of them eh, turned around eh, and glorified God. Eh? I wish I had a witness in here. Eh? When the Lord eh, has done something in your life, eh? you got to learn how to tell the Lord thank you. Eh? And then give God some glory for what the Lord has done. That's what the Bible said happened here. He turned around and glorified God. I wish I could have been there just to hear what he said. He probably said, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, glory. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what it said, but it glorified him. And the Bible says, and then it turned around and went back to Jesus and fell down. This is how it ended. And he thanked the Lord for what the Lord has done. Is there anybody in the room that's ready to thank God for what the Lord has done? The Lord said unto him, wasn't there ten? Where is the nine? I could just imagine the one that came back said, Lord, they kept on going, but I couldn't keep going. I had to come back here and tell you, thank you. Why are you thanking me? I looked at my hand. And my hands looking new. I looked at my feet, and my feet did too. I checked out my color, and my color came back. I examined my skin, and my skin had changed. Oh! <laughs> Thank you eh, for what you done. Is there anybody in here eh, that got a thankful spirit eh, for what the Lord has done in your life? Eh? I got to close here, eh, but let me tell you a little story eh, about the little girl eh, who was being raised by a grandmama. Eh. The Bible said eh, grandmama took care of the little girl. Eh, but one morning, eh, when the little girl woke up, eh, grandmama wasn't cooking. The house was cold. There was nothing going on. Grandmama wasn't stirring around. And the little girl went to grandmama's room. And when she got to the room, grandmama was in the bed. She said, Grandmama, is you okay? She said, Baby, grandmama's sick. Oh, praise his holy name. I'm sorry. Ain't nothing cooking. I'm sorry that the house is cold. But the little girl's grandmama had taught the little girl that whatever happened, take it to Jesus. So the little girl sat out, got a pen and a piece of paper, and began to write a letter. She said, Dear Jesus, Grandmama's sick. Jesus, we ain't got no wood. Jesus, we ain't got no food. She took it, put it in the arm belt, dropped it in the mail, sent it to Jesus Christ. The next morning, oh, praise his holy name. The postmaster of a reading mail uh, seen a letter uh, that had been addressed to Jesus. Uh, said, Jesus, uh, 
grandmama sent you. Jesus, the house is cold. Jesus, ain't no food on the table. And the Bible says that the little girl kept on by the business. But the postmaster went to the doctor and said, Doctor, I got a letter. This lady is sick here out on Rock 5. Go see about it. Whatever she owes you, I'll pay you. Went to the wood mill. Say, Grandmama's house is cold. Out on our Rock 5. Say, take some wood. Start a fire. Whatever she owes you, I'll pay you. Went to the grocer. Says, say, give us some grocery. Out on Rock 5. They ain't got nothing need you. Whatever the charge is, I'll pay you. And the Bible says when the little girl got home from school on her way, she knew the smoke coming from the chimney. She opened the door. <laughs> she felt some food uh, cooking in the oven. Uh, she looked in the house uh, and grandmama was stirring around. Uh, she got another piece of paper uh, and got a pen uh, and set that down uh, and wrote another letter. Uh, she said, dear Jesus, uh, I just want to tell you thank you. Uh, anybody in here uh, ready to tell the Lord thank you? Uh, oh, uh, you've been good. Uh, oh, Oh, you made a way. Oh, you healed my body. Oh, you saved my soul. Oh, you set me free. Thank you. Thank you. Because one Friday, you died for me. Buried in a tomb. Got up Sunday morning. All power in your hand. Say yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you in the morning. Thank you in the new day. Thank you in the evening. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you for holding my hand. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for my joy. Thank you for my celebration. Thank you for my laughter. Thank you for my hope. Thank you. I just want to tell the Lord, thank you. Some of y'all too quiet for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for covering me when I couldn't cover myself. Thank you. In my weak moments, when I couldn't get it together, you just kept holding me, rocking me, keeping me, blessing me. Thank you that when I didn't understand, when I tried to wrap my finger and my mind around what you do in my life, you have it your way. I didn't understand it. But when I should have given up, you kept holding me, you kept covering me, you kept telling me, it's just going to be all right. So today I just say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just another day that the Lord has kept us. Anybody know the Lord kept you? Anybody know it? I mean, you really know it. That the Lord has 
kept you. Today you can tell the world, I'm thankful because I've been kept by the master's, by the master's hand. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. How it started. Whatever your situation has been. How it started. And how God brings you through it and out of it should end with us telling the Lord thank you I'm done just kind of lift your hands toward heaven throw back your head just tell the Lord thank you Lord thank you go on tell him thank you thank you Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You brought me out. You made a way. I just want to tell you, thank you. Come on to your feet all over the sanctuary. Oh, come on to your feet. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift them hands up to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You, Lord. Bless your holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I just want to thank the invitation is extended you're watching us virtually you're listening to us on our conference call line or you're gathered in the sanctuary today maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life Maybe you even just strayed away from the foe. Or maybe the Lord just answers your prayers. And said, this is your place. This invitation is for you. You can accept Jesus Christ right now. You can renew your relationship right now. Wherever you are, this is your invitation. Call us. 313-361-0087. Pastor Mills. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to renew my relationship with the Lord. I desire that you be my pastor and New Ebenezer be my church home. Go ahead. Call us at that number. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. I'm brother so-and-so. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to renew my relationship with the Lord. Pastor Mills, I want you to be my pastor. Want New Ebenezer to be my church home. You could do that in the sanctuary. The same thing applies to you. This invitation is for you right now. This is your invitation. I just the door is open. Thank you, Lord. You made a way. You made a made a way yes you did oh Lord you made a made a way oh, oh, oh you made made a way 
fade away. Hey, I just want to stay right there. Oh, I just want. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Lord. Put the hands together. Take your seat if you can. Mm-hmm. I just want to. Oh, Lord. I just want to. Yeah, yeah, I just want to thank, thank you, Lord. Put them hands together, praise and bless the Lord. How good the Lord is on today. How good he is on today. How good he is on today. How good he is on today. Sister Bragg, I'm so glad to see you at church today. You ain't going to believe this. You're not going to believe this, but I went in prayer last night. I asked the Lord to allow you to come to church on today because I wanted to talk to you after service about something. And God being the God that he is, he answers prayers. Y'all don't believe me. I keep telling y'all I can get a prayer through. I don't know why y'all don't believe me. I ain't get a prayer through. I bless God for your presence on today. Well, it's giving time. It's giving time. We're going to prepare ourselves to give. And be a blessing in our giving on today. Get that good Thanksgiving offering in your hand. That good one. That good one. Part of that one that you're going to use on Black Friday. Get that good Thanksgiving offering in your hand. We're going to pray our prayer. Officers are going to come by. Walk by you. They're going to receive your gifts. You don't have to walk. They're going to walk by you. Receive your gifts. Get the officers some baskets on today. Prepare ourselves. Prepare ourselves for some giving. Those of you who are watching us virtually, you know how you can do it. Even in the sanctuary, you can go to that Giblify app. Go to Giblify and be a blessing in your giving on today as well. Go to Giblify, New Ebenezer Baptist Detroit, and be a blessing uh, in your giving on today. Reverend Cheeks, he's watching us on work, so make sure, Reverend Cheeks, you send your offering on today. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Bless now the gifts and the giver. Let it be used for the purpose of which it is received. We get glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And bless God. Come on, let's give. Come on, let's give. Pull your offering up and they shall come. Pull it up and they shall come and receive your gifts. Unless you gave your offering on your way in the door. Pull it up and they shall receive your gifts. Good to see my cousin Irene sharing with us all the way from Florida. Hey, Irene, good to see you today. Good to see you. Brother Ozzy, good to see you. Deacon and Sister Edge, good to see you on today. How good the Lord is. Miss Mary is in church. Good to see you, Miss Mary. Good to see you all. Aisha, good to see y'all sharing with us on today. Listen, bless you so much on the day again. Thank you for sharing with us as you enjoy this time with your family, with your friends on today. I encourage you, even as you gather, to gather safely. Amen. To gather safely on today. As you gather, gather safely uh, on today. The, the numbers in Michigan are so high. Michigan is considered at this particular time to be the COVID state, the number one state leading uh, in the rise, beloved of God, and COVID cases. And so I am uh, praying that you all
as you celebrate, that you be careful, that you be prayed up, that you do what's right. My mama had a birthday a couple of, about a month or so ago, a little over a month, uh, ago, a little under a month, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so family members got mad with me because I said they couldn't come to the birthday celebration as they hadn't been vaccinated. So people got all upset. Peanut, Uncle Peanut said, we can't come. Uh, you can't come. You just can't come. You know, uh, life is valuable. If you can smoke weed and you don't even know what's in it, oh, glory. And weed don't smell like weed back in the day when me and Miss Mary and Freddie and them was smoking it. it don't, that weed don't smell the same. That weed, that's a different type of weed nowadays. And y'all just smoking it. I'm telling you, y'all just smoking this stuff, don't even know what's in it. And can on oh, you talk about a vaccine. Well, it's vaccine. It's, it's new that they doing. You talking about a vaccine and can on this new and stuff. That weed you smoking is new. Yeah. That that weed laced with everything. It's killing you. And y'all dying right in front of each other with opioids and all of that stuff. Dying right in front of each other. And that one dead and y'all still getting high. Look like June burning them dead. You still shooting up and carrying on. Listen, beloved of God, cover your butt. Cover your butt. You need to cover your butt. You know. You need to cover your butt. I'll see him in a minute. You need to, you need to cover. Somebody say, cover your butt. You need to cover your butt. If you don't want to cover your butt for yourself, you know, cover your, cover your butt for me. And just like y'all can be proponent, components of it, I'm going to be a, a, a proponent of it. And you need to get vaccinated. I don't care what you say. You need to get vaccinated. Y'all be quiet. Amen. You need to get vaccinated. I got this booster. And if they tell me in six months from now I'm going to need another booster, I'm going to get that one too. Amen. I'm telling you, I get all my shots, flu shots, all that stuff. You need to do it. You need to do it. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't get no vaccination, you act a fool and die, they bring you to the church for your funeral, I'm going to get up and preach. I want to talk about the unvaccinated. That's going to be my text. That's what I'm going to preach. Amen. I'm going to preach it. Cover yourself. Cover yourself. Cover your family. Look what's going on with our children in school. Look what's happening to our children in school. Cover yourself. Cover your family. And can on. They tell me Big Mike prayed on y'all the other day, huh? Yeah, they say Big Mike prayed on, on Matt and Christina. Hey, Rem Brock never got prayed on before like that, have you? And Big Mike want to know when can he get his shot. Matt and them say, we talking about it. We thinking about it. Big Mike asked him about three times, Miss Cece. They was having family prayer. Big Mike went to the Lord in prayer. Lord, talk to my mom and daddy. <laughs> Everybody vaccinated but us. The Bible said a child shall lead them. Sometimes it pays to listen. Sometimes it pays to listen. Cover yourselves. Just tell three people, cover yourself. Cover yourself. Cover yourself. Come on. Let's stand, won't you, all over the sanctuary. If these numbers keep rising, you will hear me talk about two things. One of them will be either we will only have service for those who are vaccinated or we will go back to virtual services. We'll let you know how things are going. I'm trusting God right now, and I am believing God. If these numbers are rising, got to be careful. Got to be careful. Let the church say amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, let the church say, let the church, God has spoke on it. let the church, now may the love of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may rest, rule, abide with us. Henceforth now and forevermore. Every heart says amen. 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 God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayers. If you're picking up meals for somebody, just hang around for a few moments. We'll be ready in just a couple of minutes for you to receive those meals.